go to the hymnal and we will turn to hymn number 633.
the Lord's hymn number 373. Good evening, everyone. That's all right. We can try it again. I have more good evenings in me. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Good evening, everyone. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It's a wonderful opportunity to be in the house of God one more time. Every time, every time we get a chance to worship God, I want us not to take it for granted. Because you never know. You never know when it might be that last worship service that you attended. Is that true? And so we want to make sure 
we want to make sure that we give God all the honor and all the praise. He is the God of second chances. Amen. Amen. And that is the theme of our crusade. I want to just welcome everyone. Um, it is our second week and it's also the final week. And so it's, 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 it's already weighing on my heart. It's bittersweet. God has been doing marvelous things through his man's servant. Is that true? Amen, amen, amen. So I'm already, I'm already wondering what am I going to do <laughs> when this crusade has been wrapped up. Mercy. But let us, let us in the final week take the opportunity to invite our friends, invite our family members, invite our neighbors. And as the preacher says, invite your enemies. <laughs> invite even your enemies and you say you don't have any you know what he said he said make some and bring them <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> amen amen we give god all the honor all the praise are there any visitors with us this afternoon i'm having a feeling there may be visitors because i'm seeing some persons at the back and we know that the preacher likes us at the front <laughs> so i'm not sure i'm not sure if you're visiting or maybe you have forgotten so i want to invite everyone just to press forward why when the preacher comes he uses this board he uses this board and it'd be great if you are closer that you're able to see feel hear experience everything that is being used or coming from the man's servant. So, so I just want to take the time, just invite you to come a little bit forward. I had a feeling this mic was a little bit low, so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to do it again with the preacher's voice. I want to invite you to come forward. If you're in the back pew, I want to invite you to press forward, please. It is important that we press together. Amen? A Amen, amen, amen. Just by way of um, information, in our crusade, um, we always have our nightly quiz. We always have our nightly quiz, and we also have a health snippet or a health presentation. We have our quiz master here ready to do our quiz or last week's winner we made that presentation yesterday and so as i mentioned to you the slate has been wiped clean clean and so now you have an opportunity again to pay attention to 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 to, to take your little notes the preacher has been saying take notes and there are some notes here too, <laughs> which I probably need to take down before the quiz master gets here. <laughs> so, 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 that, so that you can um, respond from memory. I'm not sure if the quiz master wants an open book test. I suspect he does not. And so, and so I will take that down just before he gets here. At the back table, we have books. Um, if you have not heard me say it before, I want to remind you the books are free. If you see anything there that you like, please take a copy. Take one for your family member that could not come today, or take one for your friend, your co-worker. It's completely fine. Amen? Amen. We also have at the back our little love offering box. Um, if you have an offering, God has been blessing you, please. We would love if you would support the program. That box is there that you can take part and support. We also have a prayer request um, basket there. If you have a prayer request, please fill it out, put it in the basket. We are constantly praying for the prayer request, but we also have a prayer night, and that would be Wednesday night, where we will again take these prayer requests forward and make special intercessory prayer for these prayer requests. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Before our quiz master comes to us, I want to talk to us through tonight's topic from the health presentation. It's under temperance. But as I go through temperance, because I want to have the program move quickly along, I'm going to invite my wife to assist me. 
in giving out these little paper and pencils. If you do not have paper or pencils for the quiz, raise your hand and she will make sure you have a paper and a pencil because immediately after this presentation on temperance, our quiz master will come forward. And so we have been looking at health snippet talks through the, um, the acronym celebrations. Tonight we are at the T in celebrations and the T stands for, oh great, some persons are paying attention, amen. Thank you so much. The T stands for temperance. What is temperance in your own words? What do you think temperance is? Abstinence of that which is bad for you. And, and, and you know what? I asked you to help me with one big word, temperance. And she introduced another big word, abstinence. <laughs> and so now I'm going to need help for abstinence. What is abstinence? <laughs> Don't do it. Stay away from. Okay, so let's go with that. Temperance is staying away from what? What is harmful for you and the moderate use of that which is good. Um, I, 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 I can't add to that. That is a good definition. All right, temperance. It says, temperance means different things to different people. For some, it brings to mind times of prohibition. That means don't do at all. For others, it just re relates to their youth or the childhood instruction and the importance of abstaining, there's that word again, from alcohol, tobacco, and recreational drugs. In many cultures and communities, temperance has become a forgotten word, a term from the past. But, my question today, does it still apply to us today? Because we live in a society where persons are not necessarily thinking about temperance. They believe that you should go and enjoy yourself. You know, the young people have a saying that you only live once. And so for them, you can take as much recreation or enjoyment as you can. And is there anything wrong with that? I see no here. I, see, I hear yes. Anything wrong with enjoying life as much as you can? <laughs> I, I, I think the congregation is divided a bit. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I tell you what. Let's be moderate. Amen? Amen? All right, let's be moderate because you can enjoy yourself a little too much. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. All right, Webster's this Dictionary defines temperance as moderation in action, thought, feeling, or moderation or abstinence from intoxicating drink. The definition includes aspects of behavior and attitude that specifies alcoholic beverages to be avoided. But is this comprehensive enough? The definition from the dictionary is using temperance in a specific light as it relates to just alcoholic beverages. And if you were to follow the dictionary approach, they would say alcohol is okay, but just a little bit or be temperate or be moderate. And I know one of the popular things is that a little wine is good for the... Oh, mercy. You guys hear that? Well, look at that. Look at you. <laughs> a little wine is good for your stomach. I don't know about that. But, 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 but what, what do we teach though? What do we teach? We teach complete abstinence. Stay away from everything that is harmful. It is only the good things that you ought to be moderate in. The bad things, I want to make sure we are clear, all those things that are harmful, we stay completely away from it. And so it's never good to have a little cigarette or a little smoke. <laughs> stay completely away from it. Amen. She mentions about being temperate with our sleeping habits because we can, we can sleep too little. 
Or we can sleep too much. Yeah? You can sit down and you can watch Netflix until Netflix watches you. <laughs> does, does that happen? I'm looking at my wife, but she's not looking at me. <laughs> it can happen there, right? Maybe not for you, but for some people it could happen. Right? Amen. 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 We want to be temperate in all things. Um, I just want to go very, very quickly. just want to go very, very quickly. We need to be balanced in living. Um, I know what the world may say to you, that a little bit of things that are harmful is okay, but that's not the biblical approach. Amen? Everything that is damaging. And this article spends a lot of time talking about alcohol uh, because it's something that many persons consume. You know, every time I, I go to a work event, um, I have to order um, cranberry juice. And can I tell you why I order cranberry juice? Because it's actually not my favorite drink. <laughs> but the color of cranberry juice has this little red color to it. And so, when I go, I say, give me some cranberry juice. And I get my cranberry juice, and I'm drinking my cranberry juice. And I sip my cranberry juice. Because when I used to order the orange juice, all the managers kept coming to me. Why are you not drinking something? I said, I don't drink. I don't drink. And for the entire night, I have to have the same conversation with 10, 15, 20, 25 persons. All the same time. So, I started drinking cranberry juice, and my team knows that I don't drink. So they, as, as if I come late, <laughs> when I get there, there's my cranberry juice there. <laughs> and sometimes they chub me and say, you know what, Adrian, we added a little bit, a little bit of lemon <laughs> to your cranberry juice. Is that all right? <laughs> I said, the lemon is fine. The lemon is fine. Um, but, but other times, though, it does have the opportunity to have a good conversation with someone about why is it that you don't drink. Because when the entire um, workforce is sipping something, whether it be beer, white wine, or red wine, someone is, 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 is wanting to find out why is it that you don't drink. And so that does have that opportunity where you can um, encourage them along that path. Amen? Amen. At this time, um, I will invite our quiz master to come. Again, before he comes, I want to make sure that we all have a paper and a pencil. Is there anyone that doesn't have paper and pencil to participate in the quiz? All right. I think they're ready for you, sir. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. You know, last week, you know, when you, when you really put effort into something, you can see a difference. And from last week, the start of last week was a bit shaky for some of us. But the beginning of this week, there's a lot of people getting off on the right foot. So let's go over our quiz number five. Tonight, six. Yesterday was five. So, question number one. God comes in the dark to save you. He doesn't stay there with you, true or false? That's true? True, true. That's true. Number two, living in the spirit is our job, true or false? False? Whose job is it? Amen. It's God's job. Number three, the spiritual process is sanctification, glorification, and justification, true or false? It's justification, sanctification, then glorification. The Red Sea is equivalent to baptism, true or false? I can't hear you. The Red Sea is equivalent to baptism, true or false? True. Amen. When there, is, when there is obedience, there is order, true or false? True. 
And six days to put the earth, it took six days to put the earth in order. True or false? False. How many? Five. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, I keep the curve the same. I want to acknowledge everyone the best way I can. So those were two wrong, which is third place, Andrew Scott, Judith Johnson, Devin, uh, Mungo, Imungo Lagoya, Jenny Ashby, and Sister Phillips. Second place. Agnes Wasaya, Cecil Thompson, Sister Neatland, Francis, and somebody with the initials of TR. First place, P. Lagoya. Magdalene Dantes, Young Isaac, Isaac Housen, Sister Georgia Alvaranga, uh, Gif, Gif Lagoya, Kelvin Lagoya and Sister Janice Thompson. I'll tell you about Janice. All last week, it was either not third place, third place, I think one time second place, but this time she's starting off on the right foot. So put your hands together for everybody at this time. So once again, I just want to encourage everyone to listen intently to what the preacher is saying tonight. May we be blessed. <laughs> Quiz number six. <laughs> Pens and paper ready, let's go. <laughs> Question number one. God making you holy is glorification, true or false? God making you holy is glorification, true or false? Question number two. The responsibility of the Holy Spirit is sanctification, true or false? The responsibility of the Holy Spirit is sanctification, true or false? Or false. When baptism excludes the Sabbath, it is Bible-based. True or false? When, when baptism excludes the Sabbath, it's Bible-based. True or false? Number four, the Sabbath is a reminder that man is perfect. True or false? The Sabbath is a reminder that man is perfect, true or false. And the last question, number five. Creation, redemption, and eternity are all examples of the gospel. Creation, redemption, and eternity are all examples of the gospel. Any questions anybody want me to repeat? Number one, God making you holy is glorification. True or false? We good now? All right. We have the special music. Then we're going to have the preacher. May we be blessed this evening. Just as um, Ella Jackson comes to us, I'm going to invite in, um, Brother Baker to pass through um, and just collect those paper and pencils 
Um, so as you see the little bucket coming through your pew, just put your paper and your pencils there. Ella Jackson, please, special music. God is my strength. How about you? assurance we can have peace we can have joy we can be strong he is our strength he is our fortress we can be sure we are secure Within his hand, he is our hope, a hope of life eternal. He is the rock, the solid rock on which we stand. Even when I cannot see tomorrow, his word is like a lamp unto my feet. And when the laughter turns to sorrow, in his embrace we find his grace. When we are weak, he is our strength. He is our fortress. We can be sure we are secure within His hands. He is our joy, a hope of life eternal. He is the rock, the solid rock on which we stand. And when the storms of life surround me And when the winds of sorrow blow I will hold on to the rock of ages For I know this one thing I know I can be sure I am secure within his hand. He is my joy, my hope of life eternal. He is the rock, the solid rock on which I stand. He is my joy. My hope of life eternal He is the rock The solid rock On which I stand Thank you, Elder Jackson. Like I said, the first day I came here, it is always a blessing when 
you can hear the words of the song. In that way, you could worship with the singer. Because what you just did was worship. And while he was singing, something came to my mind. And it is this, that sometimes we forget that the service is not about the preacher. See? We have favorite preachers and favorite singers. And wherever they go, you want to go because this pastor is there and that preacher is there. What happens is that you go into the house of the Lord not to worship God but to hear the preacher. This is never about the preacher. It is always about God. We are here to worship the Lord. Amen? Well, I'm very grateful that you chose to stay for the service tonight. I know that some of you have been here for hours already. And so... Uh, we are going to, I'm going to take you through a study tonight, and I'm hoping that as it is revealed to you, it gets you excited about the truth, so you do not sleep while I'm making the presentation. All right, now if you want to sleep a little bit while I'm, I'm speaking, you can just raise your hand, and you know, just raise your hand while I'm speaking, and then I'll give you a nod. If I do not give you the, the nod, you cannot sleep. If I, if, if like the sister in the box, you just wave your hand like that, I just, uh, you know. Once I do that for you, sister, you may, you may sleep. This is, and then, and plus there is a part, there's a part in the presentation where you would be allowed to sleep. I'll let you know when we get to that part of the presentation. All right. But it is, it is there, you know, it is there. Oh, Sister Clark, you're, you're here. I, di I didn't expect you to be here tonight. And you're all by yourself over there. Why? Holy Spirit with you there. But we miss you here. I want to hear your voice saying, yes, preacher, tell us. All right, well, that's fine. Okay, so we clean this. We would leave, let me see if we need three columns. Yes, we would need three columns. So we just clean everything on the inside. All right. So we are shifting gears from dumplings. We, were, we had rice, and then we got a piece of a half of the dumplings Sabbath morning, then another half last night. There's no more. So now we're switching to a different kind of food. Uh, sugar cane is coming just now. Don't worry. When we begin to talk about under the law and under grace and why Saturday is not the Sabbath, these are difficult to get through. But once you get through the hard skin, it's sweet. Yes? All right. So we're moving from the dumplings. And I'm going to give you... What, what, what is tough? Tougher than a dumpling. What is? Yam. Yeah, not everybody likes yam. People like dumplings, but not everybody likes. Did I get that yesterday? Is that what you gave me, sister? White yam. Yeah, because you know in America, the, the yam got to be white. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that was really, that was nice. That was nice. My grandmother used to have to give us licks to eat yam and dashing and so on. Yeah, my, yeah you, my grandmother, oh boy. Uh, but when she would make dumplings, everybody liked the dumplings. But uh, the yam, she couldn't get us to, to she, 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 when she gave us food, she'd be right there with a belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know they say when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you beat your kids, you know, the word beat is not a good one here in America because America have changed all these things and make it terrible. Yeah, but I'll say it because we're Caribbean people. We got licks, <laughs> right? Our parents beat us. I always hear them say, well, you know, here in America, oh, you beat your kids, they come out violent. Well, I don't see no kid who got licks taking guns and going to shoot up all the students in school. 
I believe it's those kids who took guns and went and shoot up all the students. If they had some grandparents from the Caribbean, we giving them some good licks at home. Oh yeah, it'll be different. They talking about you get licks, you'll turn out violent. I got licks. I got licks. I, my grandmother gave me so much licks, I became a pastor. <laughs> and look at me, I'm a pastor, and I got licks. Licks. All your back and you twist up and you run. Yeah. I always say to people and I say it all the time. If my grandmother had beaten me maybe two more times. Because if after all of that I became a pastor. If she had beaten me two more times today I would have been the Pope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to study the Bible? Now, we're, act, we're really getting into some deep study this week. Yes? I, had, uh, I was on the phone today with the elder of a church in Massachusetts, and they are asking for a one-week revival. And I said to him, we are going to do a one-week study revival. We're not going to, because when you hear revival... You, you think, well, the preacher is going to come and get you all excited for a week. I said to him, this is not what we're going to do. We're going to do a study revival. We're going to take some subjects and go deep and let the members leave learning more. So we're going deeper this week, all right? So which means your quiz is going to get tougher. All right, so take your notes. Are we ready for prayer? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are very grateful for your blessings. I personally am really happy that the members who have been here for hours already stayed back to assist the program with their physical pre presence and not just by prayer. So please give them all a very special blessing for, for doing this. I do not know what blessing you will choose to give to them as a reward, but I am asking you to give them a blessing or two for this. Now we are going to study your word. We ask you for mental powers to understand what we're going to learn and to apply to our lives as Jesus is revealed to us. So thank you for your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me remind you that we have left the stage of justification. We're not there anymore. Okay? Okay? Good. We've left, we've, we've, we're out of the dark. All right? We understand how Jesus saves people from the dark. He's the way. The way takes you from the dark and brings you into the truth, which is light. So we will be there for the rest of the week. Amen, everybody? All right. Now, I want to show you why we're doing that. All right, why are we doing that? Remember that the Lord took one day to take the earth out of darkness. Remember that? And one day to give the earth his presence, which is the Sabbath. We will learn more about that as the week go by. So he took one day to take the earth out of darkness. One day... To bless the earth with his holiness. Without the presence of God, it doesn't matter how much this earth has, animal, human beings, it is still empty. It is the presence of God that makes this earth, that had made the earth what it was. And he gave his presence in the Sabbath day. So the, the fact that he blessed the earth with his presence, that took care of the emptiness because you could have everything in this building here. If God's presence isn't here, it is still empty. It's like your own soul. You could have money. You could have everything. Your family could be great. If you do not have Christ in your life, you are empty. Amen. So the earth became filled when God gave the earth his presence on the Sabbath day. Amen? We will learn more about that. But between taking care of darkness, 
and taking care of the emptiness, God took care. God had to take care of what? What's the second problem there? Uh oh, they are oh, this order. And how many days did it take to, to do that? Five days. So now, so that's why you have seven days in the week. Now, here is what I want you to keep in mind, brother. The plan of salvation has how many stages? Three stages. Justification. Sanctification, which is here in the middle. And what? Glorification down at the end. Now, when a person accepts Jesus as his savior, that first day is taken care of. He is now justified. You're no longer in darkness. You are now in the light. Okay? So when you come into the light, which is the truth, what did we learn Sabbath morning? You must do what in the truth? Stay there. You stay in the truth until Jesus comes and takes you to see your father. Amen, everybody? Okay, wonderful. Now, here is what I want you to understand. When you come into the truth, since you are going to stay there until Jesus comes, it means your entire Christian experience is right here. Where God is solving how many problems? One. <laughs> He's solving the problem of disorder in your life. Because he has to solve that to prepare you for eternal holiness. Amen. So you, if, how, many, how long have you been baptized, my brother? Since 1993, a long time. All right, so that'll be like what, uh, 19 years? More than that? Okay. If you spend, if you've been following the Lord for 50 years, it means for the past 50 years you've been here. If you got baptized six years ago, for the past six years you've been here. In other words, you spend your whole life as a Christian in the truth. Because it is supposed to sanctify you until the day when the Lord said, He that is holy, let him remain holy still. Amen. Amen. Until then, you are here. Forty years with Jesus since you got baptized, those 40 years have been here. Which means what you need to be paying attention to as a Christian is your sanctification. Is that clear? Why? Because that's what God is doing right there. Now, let me ask you a question. Where would you put the church in your life? Would you put the church here? Here or over there? Where would you put the church in your life? Where does the church come in in your life? In the middle. The church comes in here. Why? Because sanctification is a relationship between you and whom? Jesus Christ. Amen. Justification is Jesus alone. That has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with the church. The church cannot save you. Mm -mm. But after you get saved, you, are, you come into the truth. Here now, the church comes in into your life. And I want to show you that from the Bible tonight. The church comes in here. You want to see that? Let me show you something. God made man. Yeah? He created Adam. And when he was finished creating Adam, Adam was perfect. Now I need you to listen. Adam was perfect. Sinless, created by the hand of God, received the breath of God and the command of God. 
He was perfect. However, even though Adam was perfect, God said, it is not good that this man be alone. So he gave man, woman. Yeah. So Adam and Eve will be together. Man united with the woman. And then on the Sabbath, they come together to worship God. Amen. Amen. Now, keep that in mind as you understand the importance of church in your life. Woman in the Bible, in prophecy, is always representative of what? The church. I want you to see this, my brother. When Jesus saves an individual... Even though that individual is now washed by the blood of the Lamb. He is now justified in the righteousness of Jesus. It is not good that that person be alone. You need companionship. You need the church. A saved individual needs the church. Why? And this is where we're going to shift gears. When a person accepts Jesus here, he's going to spend the rest of his life with the Lord here until he's sealed for the kingdom. Since the church comes into your life there in sanctification, it means you cannot Live your life as a Christian without the relationship with the church. But you have to be careful what church you choose. Now let me show you something. Have you ever heard people say, we do not need doctrines? You don't need doctrines. All you need is Jesus. Well, let me show you. When you accept Jesus... Remember, this is a message about the way. Jesus loves you. Jesus is all of this to you. This is a message about the way. Fine. But that is not a doctrine of your church. I've been to many churches. What I do, I go to Pentecostal churches, Baptist churches, evangelic churches, and I ask the same question to the pastor and to the members. What are the doctrines of your church? The last church I went to was in the Bronx. Large evangelic church, a Baptist church, and I went in and I asked, what are the doctrines of your church? And they said to me, oh, we believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior. We believe he died for us. We believe that uh, uh, our sins are forgiven by Jesus Christ. And we believe that he's coming again and we have loved each other and so on. And, 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 And that's what they tell me. And they tell me that in all of these churches. The thing is this, that is not a doctrine of your church. That is the foundation of Christianity. In other words, you found that there. If you change that, you're no longer a Christian church. You met that there. Paul said, no other foundation could any man lay than that which is already laid, Jesus Christ. That is the foundation. Are you with me? That's the foundation. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus died on Calvary. We're washed in his blood. There is power in his blood. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. All of that, that's not the doctrine of your church. That is the foundation of Christianity. You met that there. When you started your church, that was already there. You have no determination on that. Are you understanding me? But, After you have accepted the foundation, after a church has accepted this foundation and decided to be a community of believers, now that church has to determine now, what do we believe about Jesus? We believe in Jesus. Now we need to teach the people what they need to believe about him. Is that clear? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what separates churches. What Separate churches is not the doctrine. All Christian churches have the same doctrine. It's like a pizza. It has the same cross. Have you ever gone to buy pizza 
with people who eat different things? We went to buy pizza some years ago. I like, in, 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 in Matlick, the I like the pizza with the salmon on it. But then we went to buy pizza and we couldn't afford much. We could only afford one, but it's three people. And three people eating different things. One of them said he, want, he, wants, uh, he don't want the salmon on his pizza. He just wants the cheese and, and uh, mushroom. I don't like mushrooms. It look ugly. I just don't like mushrooms. But he wants mushroom. I don't want mushroom. The other guy, he wants everything. So we spoke with the guy, and the guy said, mm, well, I could do that for you, since you're buying a large pizza, there's space enough. So he put uh, the, the, the salmon here with, some, with, the, with the cheese and all, and then for this guy, he put uh, the mushrooms and the other thing, and for the, because he don't want no salmon, and for the other guy, he put everything. So on one cross, you have different things that you could choose. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing in Christianity. All Christian churches have the same foundation. Why? We have no determination in that. Christ built the foundation himself. But here is what Paul says. Paul said, no other foundation could any man labor on that than that which is already there, Jesus Christ. But he also said, it is what you build on that foundation you need to be careful with. He said, some build on that foundation with wood and hay and gold and silver. What you build on that foundation now is what I call and what the Bible calls now doctrines. What separate churches is not the foundation. What separate churches are the doctrines of these churches. And what keeps us worshiping separately is that we reject. We don't reject the foundation of the Catholic Church, which is Jesus Christ. We don't reject the foundation of the Pentecostal Church, which is Jesus Christ. We all have the same. Jesus is the Savior. But what we reject is what's built on top of that foundation, and that's your doctrines. We reject the doctrines of the Catholic Church. And they reject ours. We reject the doctrines of the Pentecostal Church, and they reject ours. And because the church comes into your life here, in sanctification process, you have to be careful what doctrines you believe. Are you understanding? What is doctrine? Doctrine is a declaration of belief that could change without you being considered a non-Christian. In other words, you could change your doctrine and still be considered a Christian. But you cannot change the foundation and be considered a Christian. Anytime you change that foundation and get, or get off the foundation or reject the foundation, you're no longer Christian. But you could have all kind of crazy doctrines. As long as you have that foundation, the world is going to call you Christian. Do you understand that? If today or tomorrow the Seventh-day Adventist church changes its doctrine, we no longer believe in keeping the Sabbath, we'll still be considered Christians. Why? We preach that Jesus, Jesus is Lord and Savior. If today or tomorrow the, the Pentecostal church rejects and they say from now on we're no longer speaking in tongues. We reject that, that doctrine. The world is still going to call you a Christian because Pentecostal accept what? That Jesus is the Savior. But here is what I want, to, want you to understand. The foundation is not what you should worry about. Nobody is going to end up in hell because of the foundation. They're going to end up in hell because of what's built on that foundation. Is that clear? You have to be careful with what your church teaches. And so from tonight until we end, what I'm going to teach you are doctrines. Amen? Doctrines. Why? You already have the foundation. We're going to teach you doctrines. So can I do that? Yes. Remember, this is not milk no more. And this ain't rice. We're going to some yam now. Yam. In other words, from this point on, people are going to decide whether they still want to be baptized. I said to a church in New York a few months ago, that we could baptize many people 
if only we just stay with the foundation. Anytime you shift gears and come to sermons about doctrines, then people make decisions whether they want it or not. And I said to the church, when I do campaigns, I prefer that the sifting occur during the campaign and not after. So you have 40 people coming to the altar because the sermons are about foundation. And everybody likes that. Everybody likes that. No problem. And many people believe it don't matter where you get baptized. It doesn't matter where you go to church. Everybody preach Jesus anyway. We all serve the same God. Have you ever heard that? Right. So they come, they get baptized. And when they come to the church now and begin to understand the doctrines, they stop coming. I prefer and I believe it is the Lord that has put this on my heart. I'm not saying the Lord has put that on the heart of everybody, but on my heart, I prefer to let the sifting occur during the program. So we're going to doctrines. And here, since doctrines are here, it is the responsibility of the church to teach doctrines amen so here we go i want to talk to you about three areas in our lives where god puts his presence amen remember we need the presence of god we could clean this i just wanted to set that foundation we need the presence of god even the numbers Without the presence of God, we are nothing. Okay, nobody said amen. Oh, nobody else said it again. It looks like you were just watching the guy erasing the board skillfully. Like you, you've never seen a man erase a board with such skills. Yeah. Yeah, man. You'll be a professional board eraser. Yeah. Without the presence of God, we're nothing, Sister Clark. Nothing. Yeah? We need the presence of God. And God knows that. Remember what, what we learned the other day? That man was created for the presence of God. We were created to stand in the presence of God without dying. That's why when God came down on Mount Sinai and spoke his law to, the, to, to Israel, Moses said to them in Deuteronomy, you see, now you have evidence that God could talk to man and man still lives. Man was created for the presence of God. Yeah? Wonderful. But then man sinned and there are those who because of their sinfulness, they either hide from God, and there's only one place to hide from God, and that is in church. Adam and Eve hid from God in the garden. The garden there represents the church. Represents where people worship God. The garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve hid from God in the garden. That's why there are people who come to church to hide from God. They know that their lives are outside of the will of God. But just to make them feel better about their state, they come to church and they feel okay, good. Well, I, I came to church, so I'm okay now. You came to hide. And then there are those who are like Cain. They don't hide. They just walk away. Cain walked away from the presence of God. And God wants us back. Now he's given us his presence in three different areas. Areas of our lives. You all ready for them? Number one. God puts his presence in us. All right? So you put, you put right here God's presence. Okay, just put in us. In us. It's easier. In us. He puts his presence in us. How does God put his presence in us? He puts his presence in us through the Holy Spirit. So we write on this side, Holy Spirit. 
Remember, we are dealing with what stage? What stage in the plan of, san of, 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 of sanctification? Okay, everybody? This is now the... So when you see the column, like in three, you got to see these three columns as as representing what happens in the stage of sanctification. Everybody understand what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. So in the stage of sanctification, God wants to give you his presence. Remember the sermon, God doesn't touch dirty? He cannot put his spirit in you if you're unclean. So he sent his son Jesus Christ to redeem you, to cover you with his cleanliness, Amen. with his purity. And now that you're covered, his spirit could come in you. He puts his presence in us through the Holy Spirit. Go to 1 John chapter 3. You know, I forgot my glasses again. I don't like wearing it. That's why I keep forgetting it. Yeah. 1 John. What, what, what chapter did I tell you? 1 John chapter 3. And let us look at verse... 24, and he that keeps his commandments dwells in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. Amen. So he, 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 he dwells in you through the Holy Spirit. So this is one of the ways in which God gives us his presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. And 1 John chapter 3, what verse? Verse 24. Please write the text so that you can teach it to your friends. What is the Holy Spirit going to do in you? What is the objective of God's presence in you? What does he want to achieve? He wants to achieve transformation. So right here, we write the word transformation. What does he want to do? Transform your life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let me say this. The Holy Spirit is not interested in making changes in your life. You can have changes in your life without God. But you cannot have transformation without the Spirit of God. People have made changes. In their lives. People's lives have. Your life could change for any reason. You win the lotto. Your life change. <laughs> eh? You marry a man with money. Your life change. All the time you're coming to church. You know. Yeah, you, you sit anywhere. You talk to anybody. You marry a man with money. Now you heal higher. <laughs> they heal higher. The dress is different. Even the hair is more expensive. You know, you make it longer now. You're throwing it back. You know, you have an expensive purse. You're walking like this now. And you're, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. You ain't coming to no breakdown old car no more. You're coming with your nice uh, Range Rover. Yes, man. You ain't have time for no Toyota and Nissan no more. Your life changed. Did Jesus do that for you? No, money did it. The Spirit is not coming in you to change your life. He's coming in you to transform you so that you can have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. And why is that important, sister? Because there is a teaching about the Holy Spirit. If I have time, I'll give you the whole thing. But I don't got time this week. You only brought me for two weeks and then you're sending me home. No problem. But let me just say this to you. There is a misconception about the work of the Holy Spirit. Many people believe when the Spirit comes, you're going to fall on the ground. You're going to roll. You're going to go shalababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
Because we believe exactly what Jesus says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else you need will be added unto you. We believe in the simplicity of the gospel. Somebody said to me, oh, yeah, you Adventists, y'all don't, y'all don't work no miracle. Y'all don't do no miracle. Y'all don't do no this. I said, let me tell you something. If God is so great, why does he have to work a miracle to heal me? Why is it that I must expect a miracle so that I could get a job? Why is it that for me to be healed, it has to be a miracle? Don't God just have power to take care of me? And I said to them, I said, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you preach that when Jesus comes the second time, you're going to go up to, well, well if you, no, let me say that again. You believe in your church, this is why doctrine is important. Many believe in their churches that as soon as you die, you go to heaven. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yes, you die, you're gone, poof, you're up in heaven. And if you, if, 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 if you weren't saved, you die, you go right away to hell. And you're just there, you're burning, fire burning you, you can't die, you become Superman. You ain't dying at all. I asked them, I said, you believe that? Yeah, soon as you die, go to heaven, right away. Adventists teaching false doctrine about this and about that. I said, all right. So you believe as soon as you die, you're going to heaven, brother? He said, yes. And is that a place you want to be? Oh, yes. Why? It's going to be lovely. I'll be with my Jesus. No sin. I say, okay, good. So why it is when you get sick and the, 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 the doctor say you got cancer, you got three months to live, why you want a miracle? <laughs> You should be happy that the doctor told you you're going to die in three months because they're going to see Jesus. You should take the phone and call your friend. Hey, Freddy. Hey, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Hey, brother, man, I got good news for you. What's that? Man, in three months, I'm going to see Jesus. What do you mean, man? I came from the doctor and I got good news. Doctor told me I got stage four cancer. And I only got three to six months to live. Boy, I'm so happy. So here now, boy, try to get cancer and come see Jesus. If you really believe that you're going to go to heaven as soon as you die, you should welcome death. Don't be running to Benny Hinn and running to these people looking for a miracle. See, the Bible says when the spirit of the Lord comes, he will guide you into all truth. Yes. He guides you into all the truth. And remember, he, you are saved first before he comes in to guide you into the truth. So doctrine must be truth. Is that clear, everybody? Wonderful. He transforms you. Yes? Wonderful. Second area in your life where God puts his presence is in the sanctuary sanctuary or just put church exodus yeah number two yes oh sorry let me put it. it's uh, uh with us sorry i want you to write there with us god gives his presence to be with us with us how is he going to give his presence to be with us in the sanctuary or the church. He said in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, he said, let them build me a sanctuary that I will dwell among them to be with you. So God's presence in the sanctuary, in the church, has an objective. He gives his presence in the sanctuary to, so that he could be with you. Remember, the spirit of God is where? The Spirit of God is where? Oh, you all tired? The Spirit of God is in us. His presence is in you. All right. But he also wants his presence to be with you. And for his presence to be with you, he said to Israel, build a church, build a sanctuary, 
I'll come in and be with you. Is that clear, everybody? So when you come to church, the reason is to be with God. Is that clear? You are with God. The psalmist says, I was so glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What is God's presence with us going to do for us? It is going to unite us. So put there, unite. So the Holy Spirit transforms us. God's presence in us transforms us. And God's presence with us unites us. That's why Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there to what? Bless that church. Two or three. He will be with us. And I'm glad he said two or three. Because we keep coming to church for program and benches are empty. If Jesus has said, where 3,000 or 4,000 are there, I'll be there to bless. We in trouble. <laughs> because he ain't going to be here tonight. If he had said, where there are 100 and 150, I'll be there to bless. We in trouble. It means all week he never came. But I'm glad he said, where two or three are there in my name, I will be there to bless. It means whether you came or not, even if my scribe alone came, Jesus is here with us. Amen. Say amen. amen. Two or three, amen. you, me, Sister Clark, that's it. Jesus is here. Is that clear, brother? Yes, and what is the objective of God's presence with us? To unite us. Unite us. We need unity. Because God is not coming for a divided church. Yes, sir. Oh yeah. So let me tell you something. You all better learn to love each other right here. Amen. You better learn to forgive each other. You better learn to forgive and put behind you. Learn to do that. Learn to understand it. Learn to be patient with one another. Amen. 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 Because the presence of God has the power to unite. Yes. Unite us together in love. We sing that in the church. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us. You all know that song? Yes. Let's sing that song a little bit. You all ready? Two, three. Bind us together, Lord. Come on, Jamaican, sing. Oh, uh-huh. Bind us together, Lord. Uh-huh. Bind us together in love. How is he going to do that? With his presence. He brought the woman to the man. In his presence, because he said it's not good that the man be alone. You cannot, you're not getting to heaven by yourself. You're getting there with the whole church. Amen. So be careful with people who separate themselves and don't want anything to do with the church. You got some people who believe they're too holy for the church. They're too righteous for the church because, you know, they know more Ellen White books. They know more of the prophecies. Have you ever heard people say, yeah, they don't teach the prophecies no more in the church. They don't do this. They don't do that. The church this and the church that. And, yeah, and, and they're strict vegan. That too. I'm, I'm just saying that. All right. Okay, my wifey, this is not, just for, this is not for you. So in their minds, God is more with them than he is with the church. And I always say to people, look how bad Israel was. And Jesus still came as an Israelite. <laughs> mm -hmm. They kill their prophets. They reject God. They rebel against his law. Jesus could have said, boy, me ain't coming as no Israelite. Not people too bad. I go choose some other, some other nation and come as a Messiah there. No, he still came. Why? He loves sinners. God's presence in the church 
unites us. Amen. Amen. And here is the last one. God's presence for us. His presence in us. His presence with us. And the final one, God's presence for us. Amen, everybody? God's presence for us. Mark chapter 2, verses 27, 28. You know what it says. It says what? That the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So how does God give us his presence so it, it, is, it is for us now? The Sabbath. I want you to put here the Sabbath. What is God's presence on the Sabbath, which is for us, going to do? What is the objective? It is to connect us as a body to him. Connect us. So the Holy Spirit transforms us. God's presence in us transforms us. God's presence with us unites us. And God's presence for us connects us. So I want you to see. The first one here, transform, this is individual. Amen. The second one, this is the corporate body. Unites us one with the other. The Sabbath is the corporate body now connected with God. Are you understanding? So it is, so I want to show you. Come my brother. He is over there in his house. I'm here. Could you come sister? Yeah, could you come? Could you come? She's over there. You can stay there for now. She's over there in her house. She's over there in her house. Yeah, come this way so you can be on TV. <laughs> she's over there in her house. And she's calling on the Holy Spirit. He's in his mechanic shop. <laughs> He's in his house calling on the Holy Spirit. I'm in my house calling on the Holy Spirit. My brother, could you stand up there, please? Right. Now, the Holy Spirit works in me individually. To do what in my life? Transforms me. Works in him to do what? Transform him. Works in her to do what? Transform her. Now, all these people working with the, with the Holy Spirit in us, transforming us, the Spirit is now going to guide us together in the church. No, you stay right there. You don't move. <laughs> so now, we are all in the church a whole bunch of people being transformed by the Holy Spirit united now in the presence of God. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, <laughs> Sabbath coming. Sabbath now, the whole cooperate body that is being transformed and is unified comes now into the Sabbath and hold on to our God. He big enough to have everybody to hold on to him. <laughs> and now with the Lord on the Sabbath, we worship the Father. Say amen. 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 <laughs> Do you understand how it works? The Spirit transforms us individually in your house. That's why I said, remember the very first time I came to this church? It was a Sabbath morning. I said to you, the Sabbath is too late to be crying for sanctification. Oh yeah, you had six days. For the Lord to sanctify you. You didn't care. Now all of a sudden, you come to church, and because you got to sing up here, you want to be filled with the Spirit. Too late. God don't work on Sabbath. <laughs> you all could go back in your archive and find the sermon there. Ain't got time to go over that. Now, so he works in you, the Holy Spirit, in your life. Then the Holy Spirit comes, bring, brings you now in the presence of God to be with him. Amen. 
so you could be united with other people that God is transforming. Amen. Amen. Now this group of people that is now united together go into the Sabbath. And as a corporate body now we connect with God. Amen. Amen. Yes. So God said it is not good that man should be alone. So he gave man woman. And now together with the woman, together, they go into the Sabbath of the Lord. It's the same thing for us. It is not good, brother, that you be alone after accepting Jesus. You need the church. And now together with the church, worshiping, united with the body of Christ, you go into the Sabbath. To now connect with your father as a cooperate body. Amen? Is that clear, everybody? Now I want to pause on the Sabbath a little bit. What happens on Sabbath? A miracle. Did you know that? Let me explain. When God began creation, well, before he started, time did not exist. Keep that in mind. There was no night, no day. There was no evening and morning. There was just eternity. Yeah? From the moment God started creation, time came into existence. So by the time he created man, man was created as a being to exist in time. Not as a being that will exist in eternity, but in time. Time is relative to us, not to God. Time means nothing to God. It means everything to us. We exist in time. So we've come here at seven. Time. God has been here long before that. Amen. So we exist in time, but God exists in what? Eternity. Here is what happens on Sabbath. When God created Adam and Eve, he knew fully well they exist in time, but he exists in eternity. How is he going to get man who exists in time to relate to a God who exists in eternity? So you know what God did? I put it this way. He worked a miracle upon himself. He brought himself, which is from everlasting to everlasting, down into 24 hours. We do the same thing for kids. Have you ever walked up? Is he, is he your son? You walk up to your boy. What was his name? Kelvin. Kelvin. Hey, Kelvin, what do you think about the tax policies that Donald Trump is, has introduced there? What do you think about that? You know, I don't understand this immigration. He going to just be watching you, huh? <laughs> he understand nothing. And you come home and you're telling him this. And he going to just sit down there, hmm? He understands nothing. So how do we talk to kids? We bring ourselves down to their level. You come down, and it, like when you get your first kid, it's going to be a girl. I ain't no prophet here, eh? just telling you. You will have your little baby. And you pick her up. Right? And as she grows, she brings you this little paper where she draws a little thing. You know it ugly. You know it ain't no good. But what do you say? It's so pretty. You lie. <laughs> but <laughs> you know you ain't gonna spend money to buy that. She's so talented. <laughs> but you know you're going to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> but that's what we do. You go down. Hey, booty, booty. You, you, what's your first name again? Adrian. Adrian. So you're going to be a little Adriana. Oh, oh, look at little Adriana. Look at you walking. Why? That's the only way you, the adult, could connect to little Adriana. 
If you don't do that, you think Adriana will get to know you? No. You get up in the morning, Adriana, and you crib. Ah, ah. Good morning. <laughs> You look at Adriana. Eh? You went to bed again? Hmm? Clean it up. Eh? I'm going to work. I'll see you later. You come from work, Adriana. Good evening. I'm tired. There's no way. There's no way you're going to connect with little Adriana. There's no way. The, the only way is to get up in the morning and go by Adriana a little bit and look at the little bit of. And as you come from work, you drop your bag, you pick up Adriana, you send her in the air, and while she's in the air, you're talking to your wife, how are you doing, honey? And then you catch her. <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm making is this. The only way God could get man who lives in time to connect to him who lives in eternity is the Sabbath. Because at that time, man didn't need the Holy Ghost in him. And he didn't need church. Are you understanding? Yes. There was no need of Holy Ghost transforming Adam and Eve. And there was no church, no need for church. But still, God gave the Sabbath. To do what? So that Adam and Eve, who exist in time, could connect to their God who exists in eternity. Do you understand that? And so, ladies and gentlemen, God's presence has been given to his people in three areas. In us, through the Holy Spirit, to achieve what? Transform us. With us, in the church or the sanctuary, to do what? Unite us who are being transformed. Which means a person who is not being transformed cannot be united with the church. That's why there will be wheat and tears. And the spirit of God, the angel of the Lord will do what? Make the division. It's you cannot decide who is wheat or tear. That's not your business. Have you ever heard people say, oh yeah, there's wheat and tear, so I am a wheat. The fact that you've chosen to separate yourself proved that you are a tear. Because it is not your responsibility to make the division. It is the spirit of God. Amen. In the last day that's going to make the division. Not you. Is that clear? So only those who are being transformed by the Holy Spirit can be united together with others who are being transformed. Amen. We are united in the house of God. So if you have a church where members are always fighting, it's because they are not being transformed Always fighting. Can't fix the thing. Bacchanal in the church. Because the people do not have the Holy Spirit. Because if the Spirit is in you individually. The church will be united in that same power of transformation. And then on the Sabbath. The united body comes together. In the presence of God that has been given for us. To connect with him. So on the Sabbath day, God comes down again to his people. How was the week? And look at you. I could imagine the Lord going up to my partner here. And look at his face. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you today. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> 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 the Sabbath is a delight. It is the day God comes. The eternal father comes into 24 hours. It is a shame that many say to him, go back and come back on Sunday. I ain't got time today for you. Do you understand that? Satan was jealous when God came down and spend a whole day with Adam and Eve. And remember, the first full day, morning, evening till morning that Adam and Eve ever had, the first time, because they were created during the sixth day. Yes. So they never experienced an entire evening 
and morning, a full day. The first evening and morning they ever experienced as a united couple was the Sabbath. Yeah? It was on the Sabbath. And it was the day that they spent with God. So their full complete day, their first ever full complete day was with God. That's why the Sabbath is special to him. Is that clear, everybody? So when you come tomorrow night, we're going to talk about doctrines because it's yam we eating from tomorrow night until we finish this campaign. We're going to talk about clean and unclean foods. We're going to talk about law and grace, under the law, under grace. We're going to talk about different things. And we see all this from the book of Genesis. Amen, everybody. Has it been a blessing for you tonight? I know that you're tired, so we're going to pray, and we're going to go home. So you're going to get a good rest, sleep, and come back tomorrow at 7. Amen, everybody? Why don't we stand tonight and say, Lord, thank you for your presence. Who wants to raise their voices loud and say, Lord, thank you for your presence? Who wants to say that? In Jesus. Thank you for your presence in us. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your presence for us. Now you alone say it. Come on now. Lord, thank you for your presence. Amen. In the Holy Spirit, in the church, and in the Sabbath to transform us, unite us, and connect us. Say amen. amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, since the musician is there, let's sing that song now. I like it. Bind us together. I don't have a good voice. Brother Adrian, you have a good voice? Oh, no, that's, that's a wife. Come and sing. Let's sing that song. We don't want the musician to go to piano for nothing. You going to play that song? Bind us together. Come on, sing us. Come help me because I don't want to spoil the song. Bind us together. Bind us together. Yes, Lord. Bind us. As our Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence. Your presence in us through your Holy Spirit when we are saved to transform us. Your presence with us when we come into your house to be united as a body, one belief, one spirit, one faith. And your presence for us on the Sabbath day when as a corporate body, transformed by the spirit we connect with you thank you for your presence and your love take us all home safely and bring us back uh, tomorrow night in jesus name amen god bless you we we'll see everybody tomorrow night